What's up guys, today I'm showing you the MQ135 sensor and how to program it, so let's go. So I've picked up one of these MQ135 sensors which actually is already soldered onto a board. Now you can buy the sensor by itself, you just have to add the extra LEDs or resistors and the pot resistor there as well. Now. If you're going to buy this board all in one, it actually works out around the same price as just buying the sensor anyway. So you might as well, all you have to do is then have the four pins, which you have the voltage, ground, digital out, and the analog out, which you can see on that diagram on the side. So when it comes to the wiring to the Arduino, all we need to do is have the five volt ground and an analog line that run into those pins on the sensor. Now I would recommend adding an extra power supply or an external power supply. Now I'm only suggesting this because you don't want any interruptions or interference there when you're receiving that signal back from the sensor and you want to get as accurate as you possibly can. Now talking about accuracy of these sensors, when it comes to the accuracy of any sensor it needs to be calibrated against something that's actually correct now in this case for what i'm doing here i don't actually need it to be highly accurate it's mainly just to show that there's an actual fluctuation in the co2 levels for the project that i'm working on you would need to calibrate it against something that is already calibrated to get as accurate as possible all right so here we have the board which i'm using a mega instead of just a normal arduino we have the breadboard power supply now I'm using that as the external power supply. What I've got the setting on that power supply is on 5 volts, which you also have an option of 3.3, but I'm also paralleling the mega Arduino board to the actual rail as well. Now you can see the positive connects up to that fourth pin. The third pin is the ground and the first is the analog channel which you can see here on the board as well on another unit I've got. Now make sure that your wires are connected to the right pin if you put the wire into the wrong analog pin you'll have to change the code or just move the wiring and as you can see there I've got the ground connected up as well and I've also got that 5 volt now that everything's plugged in, I'm going to leave the sensor running for a bit of time. You need to give it about two minutes to warm up because it has a coil that's inside that needs to, to warm up inside the actual sensor. Now, if you don't, you could get a bit of readings that are a little bit off. And the other thing you need to realize as well is that these sensors need to what's called burn in and you need to leave it overnight for about 24 hours turned on so it actually adjusts itself from being a brand new sensor. That's just something you have to do with these sensors. If you're wondering what this project's all sitting on, I've got these 3D printed board modular setup. Go check out that video as well. But now all we have to do is start coding. So I've got a link in the description below to the code that I've got now. I have uh, butchered a bit of this code from Learn Electronics, uh, his YouTube channel, um, mainly because he actually created a piece of code that averages out the CO2 readings. Most people just grab the analog output and then just throw it straight in as, as the actual uh, PPM, which is not really the right way of doing it. Um, but as you can see here, once the code is uploaded I've actually got the readings there which will start to change because this unit needs to warm up as I was saying before so as it's if I add gas to the sensor you can see that the ppm levels actually change it's more significant now that when I do it because the sensor is actually burnt in a bit more so it actually registers a bit better so as I was saying earlier this project was actually built for my algae co2 system now the way I've designed it is so that I can actually get a rough reading on any changes in CO2. It's not going to be accurate down to the exact measurement. Like I was saying earlier, it would have to be calibrated and all that stuff to be that accurate. Now for me, this will do the job to be able to see any fluctuations in the CO2. So check out those videos as well. Make sure you like and subscribe. 
That's about it from me. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.